Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with Ask Dave episode number 280. This again is uh, the quarantine special, and today I'm going to answer a request that came up in yesterday's Thursday evening live stream, and that is, how do you set up the reference station for CW? Well, it's pretty easy to do, just a few steps to go through. And I thought I'd uh, spend a little extra time on a couple that could really trip you up, but uh, we'll just go straight through this whole thing. So this is the reference key, by the way. Uh, it's an MFJ 566M. And it's, it's small, it's small, but it's very nice key, very well built. Um, 3D printed components. It's got a nice jack in it for stereo cord and uh, this is what we're going to use for our reference station. So what I'm going to do right now is go into some photographs and uh, uh, screen captures from the front of the uh, radio and we'll see just how it's done. All right now uh, this is the reference station the ICOM IC7300 and uh, we see on here that there are three particular features on the front that we're going to reference uh, in the slides. Uh, just starting at the bottom, the menu button, we'll keep that in mind. That's always labeled the menu button regardless of where you are. And then up on the right hand side, the multi button. Now that multi button not only turns, but you can push it in to click it. Okay. And then over on the left, strangely enough, there's a Vox slash break in. BK dash IN is break in. Uh, the Vox is for voice, the break in is for CW. And we'll talk about all of these as we go. You can go to www.dcastler.com slash reference to find information about the radio and the key. Now, if we look at the next picture here, we see the key jack. This is from the manual. If you have a key and if you do not have a connection for it, uh, there is provided with the radio a quarter inch plug. One comes with the radio in the little plastic bag with the extra fuses and so on. Use the tip and the sleeve. Now, that extra little part in there that's not referenced is called the ring. Now the reference key is already wired correctly, but you'll need an eighth inch to quarter inch adapter. It turns out that the plug in the back of the radio is a quarter inch plug. Now that's fairly common for keys, but a lot of QRP rigs these days, a lot of radios are using eighth inch jacks. So I just, this is a little stereo adapter like you would get down at Walmart that adapts uh, the quarter inch to the eighth inch and then that eighth inch goes to the key. Sometimes quarter inch is called three and a half millimeter and eighth inch, which should be half of that, is two and a half millimeter. But anyway, uh, that's what goes to the key out there. And this is on the back of the radio on the upper right hand corner. Now, on the screen, okay, on the screen, touch CW in the uh, upper left hand corner that will bring up all your modes now it'll probably say single sideband or SSB but you want to select CW now I ended up hitting it twice so I get CW reverse you don't need to worry about that if you don't want to just uh, tunes subtly different now I wanted to point out that there are three CW filters filter number one up here as you see down in the lower left hand corner, selects about a thousand, uh, well more than that, about 1500 uh, hertz wide. This is your wide filter for CW. If you touch the filter button uh, or the filter on the touch screen, you get filter two which is narrower here. You see we've got one signal in there, but it's a little bit wider. It's about 500 hertz wide. And then there's a third, a filter three, that is really quite narrow. Now normally what I would do is start out with filter one, and then as I tune in the signal the way I like it, then I would go down to filter two or filter three. 
okay to get it just down all I want to hear is the person I'm having a QSO with but when you're sending out a CQ I would recommend going with filter one because the person answering the CQ may not be right on your frequency okay now press the menu button and then press the keyer now you have to be in CW mode for this to work okay so menu then keyer and then this brings up this weird screen okay these are your memories where you can put uh, text in it like you can put a CQ in it uh, you can put uh, a QRZ which is in there now when you put your own call sign into the radio it'll show up automatically on these uh, various uh, buttons but you can modify these if you hit edit and you go into the uh, if you hit edit and it will take you into here and then you press on edit again you can edit those eight memories and it'll bring up a little faux keyboard on the screen and you can edit to your heart's content but we're not doing that today nor are we messing with the 001 set which has to do with contesting we're going to go to CW key set okay and then press uh, just press that CW key set touch that and it brings up uh, two pages of menus the first is the side tone level I've got it at about 50 percent this is how loud you want to hear your own code in your headphones or in your speaker I've got mine set about 50 percent that's a good place to start now don't worry about side tone level limit here repeat time um, you don't have to worry about that either uh, dot dash ratio is only for electronic keyers so press the down button over there and go down here rise time leave it four milliseconds the lower the rise time the sharper the keying sounds but the more likely it is to create key clicks if you make the rise time too slow the keying sounds mushy and hard to copy Paddle polarity has only to do with using um, an electronic keyer set of paddles. The key type, go ahead and touch that and set it to straight. Straight means a straight key. A straight key is like the one that we are using in, um, in this case. Now, this one down at the bottom is kind of interesting. Mic up, down, keyer. The microphone has two buttons on top. And if you turn that on, when you're in CW mode, you can use one of those buttons as a Morse code key. Obviously, that is something you'd want to save for emergencies because your keying is going to be terrible uh, because the microphone button is not designed for most Morse code sending. You want to use a regular key. Okay, go hit the uh, escape down at the lower uh, right, and that'll take you back here. Now press the multi button, okay? Press the multi button. You have RF power, and there's nothing wrong with using 100 watts out on it, although you can set it for less if you want. Key speed has to do with the electronic keyer. We're not worried about that, but the CW pitch we are worried about this is the tone that will go out now when I was a brand new ham a lot of people used a thousand Hertz but it seems to have settled around to where the default these days is 700 Hertz and if your hearing is a little bit iffy you may want to tweak this a little bit but that's the tone you want probably 700 Hertz right there is where you're going to want to set it now the way the radio works if you zero beat another signal which is another video entirely um, you'll have you'll be hearing them at 700 Hertz also okay you set that and then set the return down there okay now this is really important because this can really throw you for a loop there's a Vox slash break in it's the break in we're interested in Vox is a voice thing break in is a CW thing notice that that goes up there to f slash break in if you press that button again you get nothing up there now if there's nothing up there and you press the key you'll hear the sound but nothing will go out over the air you have to press the transmit button 
then send your key and then press the transmit button again to go back into receive. But if you press that break in button again, you can get regular break in, B K I N, break in, which is whenever you push the key, it will send what you're going to send, and then there will be a little bit of a delay before the uh, receiver comes back on. If you press full break in, which you get by simply pressing that key again, um, you can actually hear the other station in between the dits and dahs of your signal. That can be a little uh, kind of throw you if you're a beginner. So you might want to start out with just regular break in. But as you get more experienced with this thing, you'll like the full break in. As it turns out, my novice rig, which was the Heathkit HW16, had full break in. So I got used to that. Uh, right from the very beginning. The receiver was back on between all the dits and the dahs. And that's really all there is to it. Once you're set up to that point and you press that button, you will transmit a CW signal. By the way, that 7062.69 is kind of in the slow code area. Uh, down maybe better 7050 to 7060 would be a good spot. The 706 to 707 uh, is sometimes used for Pactor, although it's not used very much, but uh, sometimes you will find very slow code in that area. So, okay, so we're all set for this. I've shown you how to set up the, uh, uh, the rig for CW and walked you through a couple things that can throw people a little bit, and then you can use it for CW all you like. Now, the mechanics of actually tuning and, and creating a CW conversation on the air, I have covered in a previous video. It's one of the very early videos. So if you go to ke0og.net slash ask hyphen Dave, and then instead of filling out the form, scroll down all the way to the bottom and look at the old videos in there. There's one about uh, CW about how to zero beat a station, how to conduct a CW QSO, and so on. I think it's two or three videos. So there you have it. Now it's Friday evening, and this video is going out late. Um, and then Saturday on May 2nd, there will be a live stream as usual. And I will see you then. And until then, 73.